Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, lately I've been talking a lot about bass traps, the different types, when to use which, how they work, which one is the right solution for small rooms. And one of the questions I got underneath the last video was something that I want to mention here. So this person said, I have problems with some peaks in the bass. And to me, it looks like if I put in broadband absorbers, it will absorb more in the frequencies that don't, that I don't have problems with, which should give me more or other problems. So I think this is a, a valid observation, at first at least, because obviously if you have just set up in a new room, maybe you've put some work into positioning your speakers, it all sounds pretty good, but you notice that you have these peaks and dips in the bass that make it really hard to judge the balance in the low end, position the kick and the bass correctly and all that stuff. Or maybe you even put up some simple treatment at the first reflection points already, some two inch panels or something, and you might feel, okay, well, I have issues in the bass that I want to fix. Why should I be using broadband absorbers, so panels that primarily absorb mids and highs and some bass, as my primary strategy to uh, tackle these issues in the low end with these peaks and dips that I still have. But I think there are two misconceptions here. And the first one primarily being what those typical problems that we encounter in small rooms actually look like. And the second, what the overall strategy needs to be if we're working from a small room on a budget. So that's what I want to break down today. Let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, just because the peaks and dips, the imbalance in the low end that you experience at your listening position is the most obvious acoustic problem, doesn't mean that there aren't issues in the mids and highs that you should take care of as well. And this still holds true even if you've already done a little bit of treatment with, let's say, two-inch panels. Because quite bluntly put, two-inch panels just aren't enough to take care of the range, the frequency range, where you encounter issues caused by reflections, right? They go much lower in frequency than two-inch panels can take care of. So even if these issues in the mids and highs don't show themselves right away, doesn't mean that they're not there. It's just that the low end problems are usually so glaringly obvious that we tend to forget that there's other stuff that we should deal with as well. I know this might be difficult to see, especially if you're fighting some serious bass issues in your, in, in your room right now, but I can guarantee that the problems in the mids and highs will eventually show up. I was just talking to a friend the other day, actually, another YouTuber, who decided to go ahead and try just treating the low end with proper resonance absorbers. And he said that the results were really underwhelming, that the change was really, really small. And that's because, first of all, it's pretty difficult to treat the low end. You need a lot more treatment than you might expect. And with those maybe four or eight panels that he got, the change just wasn't that big. And then on the other hand, it doesn't actually deal with any of the issues in the mids and highs. They're still there. And they do have a huge impact on the precision, on the detail of the stereo image, on your ability to tell transients, to tell how things decay in the music, just the, the tightness in the music. It makes a huge difference. And that segues nicely into the second misconception here. And that is that it makes sense as a strategy to focus only on fixing the bass because that's where you have your issues. And that doesn't make sense out of two reasons. The first one, which I just explained, and, and that's that you actually need a lot more treatment than you might think. And on top of that, it might not actually do what you think it will. I've got a whole other video here that you can watch just about what bass traps actually won't do for you. But more importantly, I think it's generally this idea that we should identify the individual issues with our room and then fix them one by one. I think a good analogy here is thinking about if you're trying to fix a really leaky boat, let's say, right? So you pull it out of the water and you put it up on its rack or whatever, and then you look at the hull and you kind of circle all the little holes that you find and maybe the bigger holes here or there, and then you start kind of plugging them one by one, right? That's kind of the the image we have in our mind when we think about acoustic treatment. We find all the individual issues and then we kind of fix them one by one. 
But that doesn't really make sense as a strategy, first of all, if you're working on a budget, but also because what you actually find is that your boat doesn't just have a few holes here or there that you need to patch, but it's actually riddled with holes. The whole thing is just a mess. And it doesn't really make sense at that point to start plugging individual holes, or maybe you start actually start with the big holes, let's say, because those are the base issues, right? So you start plugging up the really big holes and then you put it in the water and then you realize, hang on, there's still a bunch of cracks here that leak water that I didn't actually see before. There's a hole here, a tiny one that I didn't see before. So you take it back out and you start fixing all those. And then it looks like a blotchy mess because you put up all these patches, right? And after all that work, you realize it would have been a much better strategy to just take it out and just decide right from the get-go to patch up the entire thing, to basically wrap the entire hull in a new layer of like fiberglass and that epoxy stuff or whatever that you use to fix it in place, right? And I think that's how you have to think about this. There are far more issues in your room that you might think across the entire spectrum. And it doesn't make sense to just pick out the biggest ones and start fixing them one by one. Because just because you fix the bad ones doesn't mean you don't still have all these other ones that you actually still need to address, but they only show up once you've fixed the big ones, right? So as a strategy, it makes much more sense to start off right away with plastering the entire hull, with fixing up the entire thing from the get-go. And that's why porous absorbers, broadband absorbers, are the right solution, even if you're trying to just fix the low end. Because in reality, you probably don't have just issues in the low end, and they'll only really reveal themselves once you've maybe taken care of the low end, or once you've gathered more experience with your setup and how things sound and how things translate. Now, of course, that means if you've already put up a few panels, a few two inch panels at your first reflection points, for example, it does mean actually replacing them with deeper panels. It's kind of like thinking like you've taken the boat out of the water and you've already put a few corks, like wine bottle corks, in like a few of the smaller holes, but then you decide that you want to cover the entire thing in fiberglass and so you really have to remove those corks first, otherwise you have like little bulges where the fiberglass doesn't properly sit on the wood or the hull or whatever, right? So if you're in that situation where you've got serious peaks and dips in the base and you're looking at fixing these issues and you're, you're looking at porous absorbers, you're looking at resonance absorbers and you're wondering which, one are the right, which ones are the right ones and maybe you're thinking that porous absorbers as base traps don't really make sense, Remember that you probably do have issues in the mids and highs that you need to fix or still improve if you've done some basic treatment already. And that as a strategy, it actually makes much more sense in a small room and if you're working on a budget to just deal with the all the issues in one go. So you're not just trying to fix one hole at a time, one issue at a time, but you're trying to fix as many issues in one go as possible. It just makes much more sense in, as a strategy to get good bang for your buck and to not spend ages going through iterations and iterations of finding new issues and patching them. Now, if you wanna dive even deeper into all the different base traps out there and how they work, I want you to download my free complete guide to base traps and base trapping, which you can get at the link in the description. It's basically like a, a summary of all the different types of base traps out there. So porous base traps, but also all the types of resonance base traps, slotted panels, perforated panels, tube traps, limp mass hangers, they're all in there. And it's really nicely broken down for you. So it's really simple to understand how they work and also how to figure out if you're looking at a certain product online, maybe what you're actually looking at, which of these types of base traps is that particular product. And then also simple instructions on how to use them in your room. So how many you would need and where you would want to place them. So again, if you want to dive deeper into the different types of base traps, or maybe you're looking at a particular product right now, I highly recommend you download the complete guide to base traps and base trapping so you actually understand what it is you're looking at. But that's it for now. I hope that explained why you would want to use 
porous absorbers, porous base traps, broadband base traps, even if you think you only need to fix low-end issues. I'll see you in the next one.